it's just survival is the thing, you know, to uh, if you could manage to live for the next day. I was living in uh, Pinner. They were preparing for war. Sandbags were going up. Shelters were being delivered to the house. We had a landlord's shelter down the garden, but we didn't have the Morrison shelter inside because it was a big, unwieldy thing, and we thought we'd take our chances, you know. Well, I mean, we couldn't sleep, really, because, you know, got off to sleep and the siren went off and the anti-aircraft guns were very loud because they were bombarded and, and of course, the shrapnel was falling because it was above our heads because they were firing up uh, when they were overhead. Oh, practically every night. Yes, in the early days of the war, practically every night. It wasn't like a London mass bombing so much. Uh, but we had we had the occasional bomb and building and the fire brigade out fighting fires. The London attacks were to moralise the population, but I think our attacks was a bit demoralising the population, but for attacking the the headquarters of fighter command and bomber command. The, the chassis of the tube trains, presumably, you know, they'd got the old chassis out, and they used to turn along uh, with the anti-aircraft guns mounted on the chassis. They used to fire at the German planes, stop firing, move along to another place. Another one used to come up, and that gave the appearance of a heavily fortified area because um, we were quite near Uxbridge, where it was head of fighter command, was the headquarters of fighter command, and we also uh, very near bomber command, the headquarters. So we're right in the middle of the RAF's main headquarters. When I was uh, in Leicester Square, there's a bomb drop just behind Leicester Square, and uh, I was. Uh, I, I, it was a sudden raid in, in the daytime, and I was caught there out in the open. And, uh, I remember all the, I, I, the the blast sort of knocked my head off and knocked me down, uh, but the glass I was under a glass canopy, you know, <laughs> in the room, and all the glass shelter around me, and of course, and then the scream of fire, the fire engine, because it, it hit a hotel just by. By, by close, but I wasn't. I wasn't hurt. It, it's, it, a youngster is a little bit excited, uh, but a bit frightening too to go with it. You know, it's a bit of a mixture of both. You know, but it changes very quickly when you've experienced it. It got from being excited to horrified. But my, my school was, uh, was, it was a private school and it was evacuated to the country. i become a boarding school. And of course, as I won a scholarship, I had free education because I won the scholarship, but uh, I didn't have the boarding. It was very expensive to go down to the country boarding. So I didn't, I didn't go. I, I could, my, my family couldn't afford it. So I stayed at home and I got a job at 14. I got a little job. Uh, actually on war production, working on Spitfires, doing the guns for the Spitfires and the Hurricanes. We 
we got att heavily attacked by the Germans. So I, I then experienced the bombing at home and also at work. They couldn't close the factory uh, until the, the enemy was near. So when the sirens went, everybody cleared, but not, not the factory workers, not the workers on, on the plant doing that. They couldn't afford to lose the time. So they had their own spotters about on, the, on this roof of the house. And they sounded the alarm if, within the factory. As soon as we heard that, the factory, a siren, zoom, you know, we had to run for cover. On this particular occasion, it's about 11 o'clock in the morning. It's a nice morning. And uh, the, uh, we had this siren sound, and they sounded a bit late. They had a late warning, and we didn't have time. We were running for the shelters, so we run out of the factory, running for the shelters. And um, I was running behind a beta by, you know, it was just a little bit in front. And of course, they had, the, the factory area was heavily defended. So they had AK uh, guns all the way around. So they used to throw up a barrage. And so we had an almighty barrage with all shells going up. And these were Fokker Wolf aircraft that flew in low, machine gunning and dropping bombs. They fighter bombers very, very fast. That's why we were caught unawares. The chap in front, uh, it was only, it's only about five feet in front of me, he's just running behind him. Uh, the shrap, a piece of shrapnel, because that was the danger, the shrapnel falling, he, uh, hit him in the head, you know, and split his head over right in front, you know. The shrapnel, when it comes down, when the shells explode, it's, it's great big pieces of shrapnel, which are red hot. So you didn't stand a chance, yeah. And the bullets, you know, you could see the bullets coming down as they come uh, scattered around. A lot, a, lot, a lot of them, a lot of them were cut down. Girls, you know, young girls. It's a terrible thing to say, but when, when you're being attacked, it's survival, isn't it? Uh, I had, uh, I had uh, three, three, three brothers serving uh, in the war and there was uh, really worried and various uh, relatives serving in the Navy and that and worry about uh, losing them, I think, yeah, losing them. You know, but having, having the uh, a, a telegram coming that they'd been killed. I think it's, it's, it's a whole bloody thing, war. It really is, you know, it's, it's, it's killed or be killed. It's just survival was the thing, you know, to, uh, if you could manage to live the next day. Really, as bad as that, yeah. It was really a, a very, 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 very bad time, but then, uh, as I say, a lot, the whole population was going through it.